Good morning. How are you doing today? I hope you're having a great Wednesday. I wanted to share a devotion with you today, and I had a funny that I wanted to share, and I, this one really was uh, amusing to me as well. This is where you're trying to make it to Friday. You need a little help and a little ride, so you're doing a piggyback. Can you see Friday yet? I was getting up higher so you can see over Wednesday and Thursday. So there's a camel in the way. <laughs> I like that one. I thought it was really cute. You'll probably see that one again because I like it so much. I want to share with you today uh, one of my pet peeves. And of course, I think uh, all good ministers should have this same pet peeve. It's the decline of the church. We're not supporting the church. Um, and it's sad. Uh, yet we, I listen to people complain and, and we're angry about our politicians are corrupt. Our leaders are not uh, doing what we're supposed to do. They, they tell us one thing and do another. Uh, so much ungodliness in the world, but yet we're not supporting the church. How do we expect these people, these leaders that we're producing today, uh, the kids that are young today are going to be the leaders in 20 or 30 years. How do we expect them to be moral and ethical if we don't teach them God's ways and have them in church? You know, so I, I just find it ironic. I, I really find it dumbfounding to think that people are really that dumb to think that you cannot go to church, not set an example of the church, and yet you expect everything to be wonderful in society. You expect the cashier at the local grocery store not to cheat you out of a dollar or two, or the repairman that comes to your house if he, he's never been in church, you, you expect them all to be so honest, or the car repairman, or car salesman, all these people we deal with every day. Why do you think they're going to be honest and ethical? It's because they need to know God's ways. So I want to share with you, and my scriptures from 1 Corinthians uh, chapter 12, verse 18. And Paul is talking to the church at Corinth. He says, but now God has set the members, each one of them in the body, just as he pleased. Paul's talking to them about the importance of church. You know, when you go back and look at history, uh, you look at embalming the dead uh, in ancient times. The Egyptians, the ancient Egyptians, they knew both the eternal or the internal and the external parts of the human body because they would embalm the body. Well, the Jews did not do this. They did not embalm. So they didn't know about the parts inside and all the many parts of the body that make up the body and how important each and every part is. You know, I know if you're listening to me, you know when you think about your body, if you stump your toe, that little toe that's not very big, it'll keep you from running, won't it? So it doesn't seem all that important, but it is. You have a toothache, that one tooth in the back that's not really important, you got 29 more of them or 31, if you've got 32 teeth, you don't think, well, you know, it's not that important. You let it start throbbing. You're not able to eat. So each part is important. And so Paul was trying to use this metaphor of the body. And he's talking about the body of Christ because there was grumbling in the church not anything new. We got it today. It was going on 2,000 years ago. So Paul was dealing with this because some people felt they were more important than others. And we're all equal. We all have a vital part to play. Think how rich his metaphor could have been with a modern understanding of the physical, uh, the physical body. If the listeners in Corinth would have known at the time. They'd had biology classes that would have shown them all the different parts of the body. Paul's point is that just as every part of the human body is important, so is every member of the body of Christ. Every Christian has a contribution to make for the health of the church. Now, I want to tell you something. You might not know this, and I know a lot of you may listen to this devotion, and that's fine. You're too busy. You don't have time to come to church. But your presence in church motivates the minister. It motivates the praise team or the choir, uh, the kids that read scripture, 
people that do things in the church that are out front looking at the audience, it motivates them when they see a lot of people that are there to support worshiping God. You know, I've seen people when they come and preach and there's only a small handful of people, the preacher's is boring. He does not have much excitement about him. But you let that same preacher have homecoming and the church is full, you can't shut him up. He gets long-winded, doesn't he? I'm not guilty of that because I'm going to tell you, I'm going to give you a full sermon if there's one person out there or a thousand because the Holy Spirit leads me to do that. But you know what I'm saying and you've seen it. Well, that's why you're important. Maybe you can't preach. Maybe you can't sing. Maybe you can't give $1,000 every week, but you can be there. Your presence, it gives a lot of encouragement to those around, plus it's a witness to the world. Now, Paul was telling this and the commitment of the people. He was trying to get them more committed to the calling of God. And that was true in Old Testament as well. I want you to think about this. When the Jews returned to Babylon from bondage, when they went from Babylon back to Jerusalem. This was in Nehemiah chapter 11. And the responsibilities were established then. The Levites were to reestablish the temple and the worship uh, and the choir. They were to lead the worship. The landowners, they were to grow crops and support the Levites or the church. Everyone had a contribution to make. There were some that were designated to live in town, some that were designated to live outside. Whatever you are contributing to the health and strength of your local church, think about that. If you, if it was all dependent on you to keep the church open, which is how the gospel is shared, would we have a gospel in another generation? God has gifted you to serve in an important way. And your contribution is important. We as Christians are a small minority in the world today and getting smaller. So I implore you, stand up. Let the world know that you stand for God. Do it by being in church. Get in a local church and support that church, a Bible-believing, preaching church. It's important. The church does not need brilliant personalities. It needs faithful servants of Jesus Christ. That's what we need. And I want to encourage you to look at your life, reevaluate it. What's your contribution to the church? God's kingdom here on earth as in heaven. That's very important. I want you to think about that. I hope you have a great week. I want you to pray with me before we go. Almighty God, I pray that your Holy Spirit will just touch people that hear your word. Get them on fire again for you to get back in church, to get excited, to reach out and invite others to come so that they can receive your blessings and the message of hope that you have for us. We praise you and thank you, God, and I ask your blessings upon those that are listening to your word today. May you be with them. May you heal those that need your healing. And may you motivate, encourage, and lift up us to do your will. In the name of Jesus, I pray. Amen. Pray God's blessings on you. I hope to see you in church. If you can't be in Proctor, in Grimesland, on Sunday, find a good church and get in it and support it. God bless you. Have a good week.